everybody and welcome to another how-to video. Today we're going to talk about the skulk block and how to use it. So I did a video about the skulk block a while ago and I want to review some of that information and talk specifically about how we can utilize this block in our redstone builds. So first things first, a couple of facts. Skulk is looking for vibration. A skulk block looks within an 8 block radius for any event that causes a vibration. So if you walk or you place a block, that will create a vibration that the skulk can detect. So you'll notice as I walk, a little particle will jump from me to the skulk. That is the vibration that it's detecting. Now if you walk on wool, you'll notice it dampens the vibration. If I walk over here, we get a vibration. But if I stay on the wool, it dampens it. Similarly, if you put wool between you and the skulk, that prevents any vibration from reaching the skulk. Come over here, I'm going to detect it. If you stay behind the wool, it won't. Another cool thing, if you waterlog a skulk block, that sound that we've been hearing goes away. So it still gets triggered. You'll see the particle happens, the skulk detects me, but it's not making the noise. So if you want to silence the skulk, that's how you do it. So skulk can put out a redstone signal in two ways. One way is your proximity to the block. So for example, if I walk very close to skulk, we're going to get a strong signal. See that? If I walk a little further away, we'll get a little bit less of a signal. And again, further, a little less. So it is detecting my proximity to the block. Now, if instead of taking a direct redstone signal, you take a comparator output, you are measuring the frequency of the event that the skulk is detecting. So for example, when I walk, it has a frequency of two. See that? And no matter my proximity, if I get right up here on it, if I'm way back here, walking always creates a frequency of two. Now, if I was to place a block, that's going to be a much higher frequency. And if I break a block, it's even higher. And again, does not matter my proximity. You can see I get a 13, and if I break it, I get a 14. So different events have different frequencies. Shooting a bow, we get about 8. Now that's important because we can use the skulk block's ability to detect specific frequencies to trigger actions in our redstone builds. And we can do that with a circuit like this. I'm going to run you once through it and then we will break it down piece by piece and talk about how this is actually doing what it's doing. So here we have a skulk block that is being read by a comparator that is in subtract mode. I have a signal coming in the side that is subtracted from the signal read by the skulk. If it is less than what I'm looking for, we don't get any signal at all. If it is the right amount, the signal lands here, the repeater pushes it into our output, which is represented by the lamp, and we get our signal. If it's too much, it's going to spill around here, and then this repeater is going to push the signal into the side of this repeater, locking it. So if it's too little signal, it doesn't make it through, and if it's too much signal, it spills over and gets locked. So only the frequency that we're looking for and get through. So let me demonstrate it really quick and then I'll show you piece by piece how this is actually working. So you'll notice here if I walk I won't get any signal. The skulk detects me but no signal. If I place a block you're going to notice that this repeater locks. So the lamp still didn't come on but the signal is getting locked off. Now if I fire an arrow we're going to get a light. And that is the frequency that this circuit is looking for. So let me show you how this thing works. So first things first, you need to figure out what event you want to trigger the circuit. So if you want it to be walking, you'll notice when I walk, two lamps come on. The event I wanted to trigger was firing a bow. And when I fire a bow, I get eight lamps that light up. So first things first, figure out what the frequency is of the event. Count up those lamps and that's your first number. Now I had said this comparator was in subtract mode. You put it in subtract mode by clicking on this little thing here until the lamp comes on. 
And the way that subtract mode works in a comparator is it takes the signal that's coming in the back and subtracts the signal that's coming in the side. Now here I have an item in a frame, and this creates a redstone signal. That is one cool thing about a comparator is it can detect a redstone signal from how full or in what direction something's facing. So for example, with our arrow in an item frame, you can see just by default we get two. And if I start turning this, the signal increments up. It'll go all the way up to nine, and then it resets. Now something like a book, depending on how many pages you have, you'll notice that as I turn the pages this way, the signal goes down. And if I turn the pages this way, the signal will go up. With something like a cauldron, the most that you can get out of a cauldron is four. And then if I start emptying it, that signal will slowly go down. Something like a dropper, you have a lot more control. So if I was to take a stack out, you'll notice the signal goes down. Or if I take a whole item out, signal goes down. So you can be really kind of incremental and specific here with that signal. Now it doesn't matter what method you use to create a redstone signal, as long as it is one less than that first number that you came up with. Now if you remember, when I shot the bow, I got eight lights that came on. So I need to come up with seven lights here. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when the arrow is facing to the left, I get seven lights on. So now that we know we have a signal of seven coming into the side of this comparator here, and this comparator is in subtract mode, that means it's taking whatever this reads and subtracting seven from it. So for example, when I walk, that creates a frequency of two. So two minus seven is less than zero. We're not gonna get any output here. I can demonstrate that. It detected me, but we didn't get any output. Now if I shoot my bow, that created eight, and eight minus seven is one. So we will get a signal right here. You can see it just comes right through. Now notice, this is taking this signal and pushing it into our output, and this is taking the signal. But again, since it's only one, it can only push it this far. You're gonna see this dust light up, but it doesn't have enough power to carry over. I'll do it one more time. See that? This lights up right here because eight minus seven is one. Repeater grabs it, pushes it into our output. Comparator grabs it, but it's only one, so it can only go this far. Now what if it's more than eight? So you'll notice if I eat, I get nine lights. So if I eat over here, we're gonna get nine minus seven, which is two. So that is enough to light this up. The comparator will take that, which will go one, two, the repeater will take it and push it into the side of this repeater, which locks the repeater. A locked repeater can't push signal through it, and you'll see that happen here. So basically, to recap, we just have a little math problem here. What the skulk detects minus what we're sending into the side, and the number that we're sending into the side is one less than our target. So this minus that equals our output. If it's the right amount, it'll go into this repeater and off to wherever we want it to. But if it's too much, we have a little bit of spill protection here that will lock this repeater and prevent that. The only other thing that's super important, I do have a couple of ticks of delay on this repeater. That gives enough time for the signal to get around before it sends the signal off. If I didn't have that, you'll notice that it locks a little late. See that? If you put just a couple ticks of delay on there, tick, tick. That is enough to make sure it locks before the signal goes through. Now I wanna show you guys, this is actually the same circuit. So as you can see, we have our little detector here with the subtract coming in the side, just like we did before. Instead of our output being on the left side, I just put the output on the right side. So our spill detection, instead of looping around to the left, it just loops around to the right. It's all the same components. It's just facing the output in a different direction. So it's a little bit versatile in that regard. So now you're probably wondering, how do I actually use this thing? 
So let's take a look at a real world example here. So here's our circuit and you can see I'm using a lectern to send a signal in the side that is being subtracted from what the skulk block detects. It comes around here and then off to our output. And our output goes off to a couple of doors that I've got up there. Now, if I walk, nothing happens. If I place a block, nothing happens. If I break a block, nothing happens. But if I push a button, our door is open. Now you might be like, whoopee, I use a button to open a door all the time. But check this out. Let's say I walk up to the doors and I have this button that's not connected to anything and I push it. That is going to open our doors. So you could have the circuit kind of hidden underneath and then instead of having to wire this up in some way, you can just have a button floating in midair and it will open these doors. And it doesn't even have to be a button. You could make a door that opens because you're walking or you could make a door that only opens if you fire an arrow. You can tie specific events to redstone actions and that is super cool. Just to show you where my brain is going here, you can see I've got a lamp and then I've got these towers with skulk on them. And if I place a block here, signal travels all the way down and turns on that lamp. I break this, signal will go down, and the lamp comes on. So you can send a signal wirelessly through blocks over space without redstone wire. The possibilities are really, really exciting. If you guys have thoughts or questions or ideas, leave them in the comments. I'm really interested to talk about this. I hope you found this fun. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to follow along on the adventure. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.